I love this game. I love this community. I am a big fan of everything, and I love to bring my energy with you, with my boy Hangman here, as we get into game number one here in winner's semis of Ling Ling versus PK Chris. And now, we gotta try and break down a match while it plays out the exact opposite of how we try to break it down. I'm gonna be honest with you. You've got two characters that dominate airspace and do such a good job of bringing their combos along the air to the ground and back. And you're starting it off on a stage that has no platforms to speak of. So it's a lot of juggles. Also, I once again, big shout out to PK Chris for continuously doing this. This song, I think it's like Kirsch or something like that from Tekken, is a banger. Can I get Cat Jams in the chat, please? Uh, this also, Ooh, this stage, super up. good for. Oh, wait. He, all right, he gets it. And Ling Body <laughs> Bucket. Ling Body Bucket. Like, hey, that's cute. God, that looks shiny. Can I, get a, can I get a little piece of that? That might have been the smartest thing that I've ever seen someone do to PK Chris. Now, he shouldn't have been that deep off stage to begin with. But. Ling took the truest 50-50 he could have ever. You either get hit by the bolt of PK Thunder, and then Ness falls to his doom, or you try to play color by numbers with PK Chris and draw around the lane wing, which clearly didn't work out too well for him. But the kid's not slowing down just yet. He's still managing to put on damage to Ling Ling, but he's doing a lot of it from swinging out of the corner. Ling is doing this very well right now, too. He's playing, he's floating in the air, and forcing PK Chris to go for a lot of whiffed aerials, and then capitalizing on the landing with the grabs. Good reversal fair to actually prevent him from getting neared by Ling offstage, but he's down as that ledge. He's gonna drop the turn up. No, oh, that is a, that's a PK Chris special. We all know it, we talk about it. PK flashes as a recovery tool always in these spots. Whoa, that oh, that didn't work out that time! Yeah, and that's why you don't do that, because unless you hit the head of PK Thunder, you get stuck in the tail. That is a trampling transcendent projectile mm -hmm. that's going to keep you locked in place. And if you're close enough to this annoying flying rat, you're going <laughs> to get annihilated. But that kid got a big ass head, bro. He just always flying out there, got things to think about. And that's one of the things that is so good in this matchup is using those turnips as ways to check the recovery. You get the hit, or you potentially get the trade up PK Thunder 2. Just barely missed that one there, too. So PK Chris kind of reeling a little bit. Uh, good job air dodging in. Just missing PK Fire. That would have been a lot of damage. Like, he did a fine job of not just air dodging in, but also making sure that DI each of the individual hits of Downer to make sure that he was positioned above the stage so he didn't have to worry about potentially buffering attack. Right there, both swinging out of shield so much. Just waiting for one person to give them that gap they're looking for. And you already know, PK Chris, even though he's at 158 right now, he's not dying to any throws from Ling, really, unless he gets a back throw at life. So he's going to fight him in center stage. Back air is not going to do it just e yet either. So it's allowing him to pressure Ling a little bit, but he's going to be forced to take this ledge trap as he gets caught by the turn up. Let's see if he can get by it now. Yeah. And that's exactly why that's so good in that matchup. Clank it. Every time it hits something, PK Thunder 2 goes a little bit shorter. Like, you don't need to interact with Ness. You just need to put something in the way. And if you're a character that spawns items, you have the perfect options available to you. Right now, Ling just... Holding that lead, I don't need to come to you. You bring your ass over here. I do not want to go fight you. I'm gonna just go ahead, hold my position, because what happens when you run up on uh, mess like that? You take PK fires and you get caught on air to airs, which you don't want, because Peach wants, uh, excuse me, Daisy wants to float for free, and that's not gonna happen. Like, Lingling has been doing a great job of forcing Chris to be the one to initiate a lot of these interactions and force ahead of his own position. Mm -hmm. And while Chris does a good job of being fluid in his gameplay, the fact that he's not positioned where he wants to be for a lot of these combos just makes a lot of these hits just stray damage here and there that doesn't have any cohesion behind where it's linked together. But there's cohesion in that. He can fire the back air, ties up the stocks. Look like a nice home mural. Hey, mom, look what I made. Just coming in with that back air in, uh, off of that PK fire. Consistent, but that's his jump. So he's going to be forced to have to recover it. That's why he put out so many cells. Never mind, Ooh. he did have his jump. I thought his jump was sniped. So that was actually really good bait. I think he assumed Link thought it was gone too. Now he's going to go to the ledge with a turn up in hand. Eat your veggies. Yeah, turn up on turn up action is going to be the way to keep yourself safe. Putting out a move or air dodging so that you take the vegetable is the best way to play around it. Especially when you have someone like Ling who's throwing them so often. Yeah, Ling also, he, he's so good at using down smash at ledge. This is huge though. You don't go, you only go for back row to get save decision. And that PK flash, a great, oh, what are you doing? That almost destroyed your whole life. 
We want to keep CT in the game. Why are you out here? Anyways, PK Chris is now going to die for that. He's going to get forced off air dodge, and Ling is going to follow him all the way down there to make sure he capitalizes. You got to risk it for the biscuit, my friend. Don't risk it that much. Yeah, there's plenty of biscuit to be the gained wrong here. With you? Bro, like this whole, like. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Think about your safety. Bro, the health insurance in America ain't cheap, bro. You shouldn't be trying to do reckless acts like that. We didn't even get to see the hit. That Nair capitalizes on him all the way down off stage like that, though. PK Chris now going behind a little bit, but still looked really good there in that game one after going down in a pretty solid deficit. And it's worth noting that a lot of that was off of a uh, very complicated D uh, SD, effectively. Mm -hmm. He air dodged at zero off stage with no reason to be off stage, and Ling Ling saw the opportunity to play off stage and took it. Yeah, bro, we out here in the multiverse. That that hits in a different timeline. That was so close to killing Ling in that spot at 60. And now running it back to FD, I'm actually very so. Oh, all right, RNG just smiled upon me. Here we start off, but I throwing it up. Not getting at the hitbox off of that because he traded out to BK Fire, but I respect throwing it up there, kind of, because you don't want to take that forward smash back, right back at it. Yeah, it's it's one of those situations where because Ling is putting out so many vegetable holes, of course he's going to get something that he wants, but putting out all of those vegetables constantly is what's slowing down Chris, so you got to hold that L. Your good luck isn't as good as you think it is. Yeah, and look at, like, Ling has already adjusted around the PK flashes, too. PK Chris is so good at catching people off guard with that. Now, what he needs really bad is to start winning on these air to airs. As he finds it right there, couple up there, he's trying to check Ling's landing. But Ling has been, it's just been floating around so good. His landings have not been predictable. And that's massive in this matchup because normally, Ness will just stay on top of you. I think what's even more important is that a lot of these interactions involve Ling Ling peeling back from wherever he's floating in place. So he's staying strictly out of Chris's burst range. Oh, this is bad. Yeah, you just can't, yeah, absolutely textbook. That's exactly how you deal with that matchup. Because he's, fo please don't. Thank you very much. He stayed in the sky that time. But that's how you handle edge guard. Catches him trying to side back it down. The frame trap, Frank, getting 47%. I love it. This is a very recent adaptation we found in Ling Ling's play. Typically, he'll use it at the ledge. But using it here to catch landings, I think, is fantastic. Especially against a floatier target. Exactly. And he's keeping up. Oh, wait, run. There you go. Now he's going to be stuck at the ledge, trying to find that back air. Just trying to like use the side magnet as a move that baits an option out. That's another stitch, by the way. No, that's Winky Face. Oh, never mind. Oh, excuse me. It was Winky Face. Face is still one of the empowered it, ones. Yes, so. it, you do get increased knockback off of that. So you don't want to be staring that down regardless. It's not as good as Dot Eye or Stitch Face, but it is a markup from the happier faces. And it is worth noting, Ling Ling's been pulling a crap ton of really good turn-ups. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys talked about it before you made the joke of, but like, worse nooch, better pulls. Yeah. But this is looking, and like, it's Ling's nooch has principle. been so good, man. The better a peach's neutral is, the worse their vegetable pulls are. <laughs> and if they're having a bad day and the neutral little weak, don't worry. Mother Earth has got you covered. All I know is on a week-to-week -week basis, I watched this man pull like three Baba Bombs at least throughout the night. So far, we haven't seen that tonight. But we haven't seen it so far. Oh, true, true. So as we can tell already, a bomb is incoming pretty soon. Uh, yeah, so get get ready for it. Dash attack is a great option to catch somebody. Oh, okay. So now you're going to be forced to have to recover to the side. You almost have to take that hit. But very smart using the upper actually as a trade to prevent from getting hit by BK Thunder there. Ling Ling has been playing this matchup at near perfection. Mm -hmm. This is why I said normally this is a death sentence for any any Ness to see Ling on the other side. He's uh, He's been so well practiced in this matchup for years. But PK Chris has gotten the dub on him the last few times. It's about keeping your composure. He's still got, even if he goes down here three stocks, he's got an opportunity to run it back. But right now, look at the way Ling is just <laughs> dancing around all this. And he's not committing because he's saying, you come to me, I got a massive lead. I love how even amongst all of the top level play that we can see, we get just a little dash of degeneracy mm -hmm. out here. Just a little bit. Right, do you think at this point with how many t uh, like how many turnips he's pulled, uh, like he's gonna like get like yelled at by like the vegan community? It's like, right, you're wasting so many vegetables right now. <laughs> it's it's listen, they're all serving a purpose. 
Everyone is keeping Chris a little bit more at bay. He's trying to make sure hey, he's trying to make sure Ness eats. And right now Ness is eating a whole ledge trap. As we see another one, Ling just been on point. Back here coming in soon. That time, oh, he tried to find a drop down there. He's starting to go for a couple of these in the down airs because the dash attacks were working before for Chris. There's that down air though, trying to get a big punish. Doesn't get it. Dash attack takes not out yet. Great DI, although that was not Chris, a real is, sentence. <laughs> Chris is on his last legs here at 168. I really said Dash Tech takes not out yet because I thought he was going to die. There we go. Don't the forward air is going to take it, though. We've got our top code breakers figuring it out. <laughs> oh, my God, man. What an incredible play so far. Oh, oh, man, what we need to figure out is... What is Chris going to do to adapt in this situation? Because it's very clear that Ling Ling is taking very active strides to change the patterns in how he fights Chris. It's very clear in his play, and right now it's looking very clear look in the how, results. Look how happy she looks. She's like, oh, you look stupid. Catch this duff. Did I tell you Smiles. you... This is my kingdom. That's how you can come here? Ooh. Equal sign, capital D. Ooh. She's smiling big, and game three is bringing us to Hollow Bastion. I'm smiling big. We are out here on Hollow Bastion, and we get some beautiful Kingdom Hearts music on a beautiful stage. Unfortunately, we don't get the transition because hazards, but it is what it is. Incredible stage layout. I, you know, obviously, it's the, it's the same as Smashville, but slightly different different in terms of the side, like the height of where the platform is ever so slightly. Funny enough, the stage is actually just the exact same as Final Destination. Yeah, just with a platform. Except the presence of a platform makes it a little bit different. And I think that does make a big difference for Chris because now there's a very distinct spot that he should be holding stage. Yeah, it's a place to land too. He was having a really hard time landing against Ling multiple times. He decided to run it back to FD, which did not work. So now he gets Hollow Bastion here instead. There's the winky face. Ling tried to catch that forward air. His shield looking a little bit low. So back, yeah, there it is. Trying to find a back air shield poke pretty soon. Hunting oh. around in the airspace is Ling Ling, and I think he's taking such a fantastic approach to this. He's staying so far out of Chris's burst range. Not a single time have we seen Psy Magnet be an active threat to Ling Ling. Woo! Yeah, you're right. Side Magnet is usually just a good approach tool to keep uh, Daisy from floating. It's a great way to confirm into KO options, too. But does it capitalize on that, unfortunately? Uh, and now, once again, we're looking at a, st uh, a stock deficit. However, it is going to even right back up. Yep. Even with good DI, it's not enough to slow down. Yeah, playing incredible. Playing consistently and incredible over and over again is Link. But PK Chris, not out of it yet. We saw this a few times today where Light almost had that great run back, but Tilde was able to stop the bleeding. This is like PK Chris has had the winning record against Link of late, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to make the run back. However, I'd like to see it because I want to see people make adjustments. I love watching the sets go further on. And it's worth noting that Chris, as a player, is capable of making those adaptions, especially when you consider, we're, again, we're in best of five territory. That's a lot of time for him to pick up on habits, both in what his opponent is doing right and what he is doing wrong. If he manages to take this game three from Ling Ling, that precious time that could very likely start a reversal in the set count. Absolutely. It's just it's basically play that clock. There's five minutes there. Slow down the game. Make it so you can get more of these air-to-air uh, -air trades that you're looking for because Ling has been empty. Yeah, there we go. He's been empty jumping pretty much for free. Borderline not scared to shield at all and not scared at all of you trying to stall. It's PK Flash. You see PK Chris throwing his head back there. Definitely looking a little frustrated as it looks like Ling is probably going to take this with a 3-0 at the moment. Yeah, no, it's looking really grim for Chris. And he needs to get something big to stop the bleeding. But Ling Ling is just playing out of his mind He's right playing now. the matchup perfectly. He's consistently keeping him stuck. That PK Thunder gonna get a hit though. Let's see what he does about the landing. Ling taking very minimal damage, but right now going to 99, 113. One good back air at the ledge equals death. As we see Ling stall around and the Daisy Bomber actually gonna get in to stop that up smash. I like what Chris tried to do with timing the up smash coming up to catch the bomber, but it wasn't good enough. And now look at the reversal that Ling Ling finds. That's a big, oh yeah, you, you had to fade back. You had to fade back, that was all forced. Man, my man just punched the hell out of Ling's yeah, hands. Yeah, no, he the haymaker, Bro. he was like, good 3-0. Say, yo, we throw our hands in bracket, we throw our hands out of bracket to his on site. We got a secondary Royal Rumble going on here, but Ling played it so well. He absolutely dominated in the matchup the way he needed to. And this right here, ev well, not this stock. The, when we get to the last stock eventually, the way that Ling was conditioning him into those high recoveries, after punishing him with that uh, high PK flash, he knew, like, well, what you gonna do about it? I'm gonna throw a turn up, I'm gonna punish you for going a little bit too high, capitalizing with that forward smash afterwards. But 
Here it is right here, forcing him to, he had to stall there because the turnip came out after him. So he was forced to stall in that position and then he covers him with the forward air. Ling really did everything he could to adjust how he typically approaches this matchup against Chris and played it out to a T. Down to this final position. You can't drift in or else you get yep. caught by the golf club. You can't drift out or else you fall to your doom. And that's exactly why we saw ba pow 3-0, Ling Ling. <laughs> we get like another arc on that, it's like, bang. He it's like, yo, the... hey, yo, good, good games, bang. <laughs> you gonna have to hold that, much like everybody else has gotta hold this quick, short, ad read from us as we talk about Hasta 3000.